Hello and welcome to another part of our Azure Solutions Architect Expert exam practice question series. We are starting with question number 89. You have the Azure subscriptions shown in the following table. Basically, you have two subscriptions with the name of sub one and sub two. Both of these are in East US location and the enter ID tenant associated with sub one is contoso.onmicrosoft.com and the enter ID tenant associated with sub two is contoso-recovery.onmicrosoft.com. Now contoso.onmicrosoft.com contains a user named user one. You need to deploy a solution to protect against ransomware attacks. The solution must meet the following requirements. Ensure that all the resources in sub one are backed up by using Azure backup. Require that user one first be assigned a role for sub two before the user can make major changes to the backup configuration. What should you create in each subscription? Now for the sub one, your options are a recovery services vault, a resource guard, an Azure site recovery job, Microsoft Azure backup server, Microsoft Azure recovery services agent, also called as Mars agent. Folks, a recovery services vault is necessary for using Azure backup to protect and manage the backups of the resources in sub one. It provides a centralized management interface for backup and recovery options. Now friends, the second part of the question is talking about what should you create in sub two? And again, you have all the five options that you had in first part of the question. Folks, a resource guard helps protect backup and recovery configurations by requiring additional authentication and authorization before any critical operations such as disabling backups or deleting recovery points can be performed. It ensures that user one must be assigned a role for sub two before making major changes. So friends, in sub one, you are going to create a recovery services vault and in sub two, you are going to create a resource guard to fulfill the requirements given in the question. Next question. You need to deploy resources to host a stateless web app in an Azure subscription. The solution must meet the following requirements. Provide access to the full .NET framework. Provide redundancy if an Azure region fails. Grant administrators access to the operating system to install custom application dependencies. Now the solution you choose is you deploy two Azure virtual machines to two Azure regions and you create a Azure traffic manager profile. Does this meet the goal? You need to tell whether this solution is right or wrong. And friends, this meets the goal by deploying two Azure virtual machines in two separate Azure regions. You provide redundancy if one of the region fails. Azure traffic manager can be used to distribute traffic between the virtual machines in different regions, ensuring high availability and deploying Azure virtual machines allows you to have access to the full .NET framework and grants administrator the ability to access the operating system to install custom application dependencies. Next question, you have an Azure subscription that contains the resources shown in the following table. You basically have five resources. The first one is with the name of VNet1, which is a virtual network type and it is not having any description. The second one is LB1, which is a public load balancer type, which includes a backend pool named BP1. The third one is a VM SS1 name, which is a Azure virtual machine scale sets type and is included in BP1 and connected to VNet1. Now you have two network virtual appliances with the name of NVA1 and NVA2. NVA1 is connected to VNet1 and performs security filtering of traffic for VM SS1. And NVA2 is also connected to VNet1 and performs security filtering of traffic for VM SS1. You need to recommend a load balancing solution that will distribute incoming traffic for VM SS1 across NVA1 and NVA2. The solution must minimize administrative effort. 
what should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Gateway Load Balancer, Azure Front Door, Azure Application Gateway, Azure Traffic Manager. Friends, Gateway Load Balancer is an SKU of Azure Load Balancer portfolio catered for high performance and high availability scenarios with third party network virtual appliances. With the capabilities of Gateway Load Balancer, you can easily deploy, scale and manage NBAs. So friends, there is a link on your screen at the moment. Go through the link to understand more about Gateway Load Balancer as this will help you in answering many more variations of these type of questions. Question number 92. You are planning an Azure storage solution for sensitive data. The data will be accessed daily. The data set is less than 10 GB. You need to recommend a storage solution that meets the following requirements. All the data written to storage must be retained for five years. Once the data is written, the data can only be read. Modifications and deletions must be prevented. After five years, the data can be deleted but never modified. Data access charges must be minimized. What should you recommend? The first part of the question is talking about storage account type. And your options are premium block blobs, general purpose V2 with cool access tier for blobs, general purpose V2 with hot access tier for blobs. Folks, the correct answer here is option C. The hot access tier of general purpose V2 storage account provides lower data access costs compared to the cool access tier, making it more suitable for minimizing charges. Though the cool access tier has lower storage costs, the data access charges are higher, making it a incorrect choice. Premium block blobs are meant for high performance scenarios and not ideal in this use case. Now, the next part of the question is talking about configuration to prevent modifications and deletions. And your options are container access level, container access policy, storage account resource lock. Folks, container access policy would be ideal configuration to prevent modifications and deletions of data. You can create a container access policy with specific permissions like read only and set an expiry time of five years. This policy prevents modifications and deletions while still allowing the data to be read. After five years, the policy will expire and the data can be deleted but not modified. Question number 93 of the series. You have 10 on-premise servers that run Windows Server. You need to perform daily backups of the servers to a recovery services vault. The solution must meet the following requirements. Backup all the files and folders on the servers. Maintain three copies of the backups in Azure. Minimize costs. What should you configure? The first part of the question is talking about on the servers, the Azure Site Recovery Mobility Service, the Microsoft Azure Recovery Services Agent, Volume Shadow Copy Service, which is VSS. Friends, Azure Backup uses the Mars agent to backup the files, folders, and system state from on-premise machines and Azure VMs. These machines can be backed up directly to a recovery services vault in Azure. Now, the second part of the question is talking about for the storage and your options are geo redundant storage, locally redundant storage and zone redundant storage. Friends, you will need to use locally redundant storage in this use case as you need to maintain three copies of the backup while minimizing costs. Now, let's understand why the options are incorrect. Now, geo redundant storage provides geographic redundancy by copying data to a secondary region, which is unnecessary for this scenario as it will increase the costs as there will be a total of six copies maintained. Zone redundant storage ensures redundancy across multiple availability zones in a single region, but is costlier than LRS. So an incorrect choice in this use case. With this, let's look at question number 94 of the series. You plan to deploy a containerized web app that will be hosted in five Azure Kubernetes service clusters. Each cluster will be hosted in a different Azure region. You need to provide access to the app from the internet. The solution must meet the following requirements. 
incoming https request must be routed to the cluster that has the lowest network latency https traffic to individual pods must be routed via an ingress controller in the event of an aks cluster outage failover time must be minimized what should you include in the solution the first part of the question is talking about for global load balancing and your options are azure front door azure traffic manager cross region load balancing in azure standard load balancer now friends azure front door provides application level routing to route https traffic to the backend with the lowest network latency among the given options it integrates seamlessly with aks ingress controllers to route https traffic directly to pods within the aks clusters and has near instant failover capabilities minimizing downtime in the event of an aks cluster outage now the next part of the question is talking about as an ingress controller what should you include your options are azure application gateway azure standard load balancer basic azure load balancer and folks azure application gateway is the correct choice here azure application gateway can function as an ingress controller for aks using the application gateway ingress controller it supports secure https traffic routing and integrates with aks for pod level traffic management application gateway includes health probes to monitor backend health and automatically reroutes traffic in case of failures ensuring high availability folks if you are liking the content do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel let's look at question number 95 of the series you have an azure subscription you create a storage account that will store documents you need to configure the storage account to meet the following requirements ensure that retention policies are standardized across the subscription ensure that data can be purged if the data is copied to a unauthorized location which two settings should you enable now there is a exhibit in front of you and you need to decide which two settings you can use to implement the given requirements i think the first setting that you should check here is enable operational backup with azure backup as this will address the first requirement of standardizing the retention policies across the subscription now the next setting you will have to enable which will address the second requirement of ensuring the data can be purged is enable permanent delete for soft deleted items folks if you have any doubts and why i have chosen these settings then do not forget to post them in the comment section question number 96 of the series you have an azure subscription you are designing a solution for containerized apps the solution must meet the following requirements automatically scale the apps by creating additional instances minimize administrative effort to maintain nodes and clusters ensure that containerized apps are highly available across multiple availability zones provide a central location for the life cycle management and storage of container images what should you include in the solution the first part of the question is talking about to run the containerized app your options are azure container apps azure container instances azure container registry azure kubernetes service and folks you should use azure container apps in this case as applications built on azure container apps can dynamically scale based on http traffic cpu or memory load and they also support event driven processing now the second part of the question is talking about for the life cycle management and storage of container images your options are azure container apps azure container instances azure container registry azure service fabric you will need to make use of azure container registry for the life cycle management of container images as it is a dedicated service for storing and managing container images it provides a central repository for container life cycle management including building storing scanning and deploying container images acr supports tasks for automating container image builds and updates and acr integrates seamlessly with azure kubernetes service azure container apps and even azure container instances for deploying containerized workloads next question friends 
you plan to use azure storage to store data assets you need to identify the procedure to fail over a general purpose v2 account as part of a disaster recovery plan the solution must meet the following requirements apps must be able to access the storage account after a failover you must be able to fail back the storage account to the original location downtime must be minimized which three actions should you perform in sequence after a failover configure geo redundant storage replication for the account initiate a failover before a failover configure zone redundant storage replication for the storage account before a failover configure geo redundant storage replication for the storage account after a failover configure zone redundant storage replication for the storage account folks pay attention to the options because they are very confusing folks the first step would be to configure geo redundant storage replication for the storage account grs replicates data asynchronously to a secondary region ensuring that data is available in another azure region for disaster recovery failover and this will be followed by initiating a failover after the failover your storage account is automatically converted to locally redundant storage in the new primary region you need to re-enable geo redundant storage as the final step in the process there is a link on your screen which will provide more details about the storage account failover go through the link to understand this process in more detail now folks if you are someone who is looking to get access to the pdf version of all the questions that we have covered in the series till now then do not forget to take the gold membership of the channel and then just email us at devopsup2023 at gmail.com requesting the pdf copy we do have one time payment options as well in case someone wants to just utilize those then email us at devopshub2023 at gmail.com requesting further information about the one-time payment options. Question number 98 of the series. You have the Azure resources shown in the following table. You basically have two resources and the first one is the Azure Synapse Analytic Instance with the name of AS1. And the second one is Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL account with the name of CDB1. Now CDB1 hosts a container that stores continuously updated operational data. You are designing a solution that will use AS1 to analyze the operational data daily. You need to recommend a solution to analyze the data without affecting the performance of the operational data store. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure Data Factory with Azure Cosmos DB and Azure Synapse Analytics connectors. Azure Synapse Analytics with poly-based data loading, Azure Synapse Link for Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Cosmos DB Change Feed. Folks, you should use Azure Synapse Link for Cosmos DB here. Azure Synapse Link enables near real-time analytics on operational data in Azure Cosmos DB without affecting the performance of the operational database. It eliminates the need to ETL, which is extract transform and load the data to a separate analytics store and seamlessly integrates azure cosmos db with azure synapse analytics this allows you to run analytical queries on the data using synapse without exporting or replicating it so folks that's all for this part of the series we will be back soon with more such questions in our azure solutions architect expert exam practice question series till then Keep liking the content and commenting on our videos so it reaches a wider audience.